Alright, here we are. Doing a little bit more sanding. We're down to a, I think I got a 1200 here uh, that I'm working with. I really don't remember now, but anyway, there's just about nothing there. It's just enough to keep it smooth. So, I just remember some of the old days when I used to work at Winchester's years ago. Uh, one of my first jobs was at Winchester's when they were in uh, New Haven, Connecticut on Winchester Avenue. Uh, I remember going there and filling out an application. And the test back then was to get in was putting nuts and bolts together to see uh, how fast it took you to figure out what nut would fit what bolt as far as thread and how long it would take you to uh, you know naturally to separate them and uh, screw the nuts onto the bolts uh, with washers and that was <laughs> that was the test um, but anyway uh, they hired me on and uh, like I said, it was one of my first jobs and naturally, you know, you always start at the bottom and I was coming home filthy every night and then I was lucky enough to get put into the uh, research and development and I started working in the uh, chemistry area on uh, certain products and things and uh, I became a good friend with a, with a chemist there and started learning a little bit about that and, you know, naturally that took me a little further and this all happened within like a year, year and a half. I mean, it was uh, relatively quick. But back then, it was one of those things to where, you know, if they, uh, they see you trying, they just go right ahead and, and put you right there. It's not like it is today. I feel bad for the people out there today trying to catch a break and get started. Yeah, it's totally different. So, but anyway, that was that. And then uh, from there... Um, Marlins uh, got a hold of me um, through uh, a family member that used to work there and at the time they were also in New Haven on uh, Willow Street so uh, they had asked me if I wanted to come to work for them in their research and development uh, they would give me a little bit more money um, you know with benefits and back then that was uh, it was a lot different back then when they say with benefits, um, but yet it, you know, it gave you some type of uh, medical coverage. So uh, I decided, yeah, I can, I can handle this, you know. So, uh, you know, I had an uncle working there and things, so it kind of, kind of helped out. So I jumped in on that with Marlins, and then we moved with Marlins, moved to North Haven. They built a new building in North Haven, and we moved out there. Now, Marlins was a good place, as Winchester's back then, to work for. Um, Marlins used to let us, uh, in the research and development, if we wanted to come in after hours. Now, they were open, you know, 24-7. However, you know, your shift is over, you go home. But if you wanted to come in when your shift is over, on your time, and work on a project that was going to benefit the company, uh, they let you. You know, they'd give you a carte blanche because naturally you're, you know, you're trying to help the company. And in return, if you were to come up with an idea that they're, that they'd plan on marketing, um, what they would do is they would give you a very small cut of the, uh, the profits on that, which was, which was nice. You know, they didn't have to do that, but they did. Um... So back then, I came up with, like I say, being in, you know, with the chemist and, and working in research and development and being, being privy to a lot of things that weren't on the market yet. And if they were, they were just so expensive that nobody wanted to deal with it. You know, like your silicones, your Teflons, and your synthetics. I mean, you know, that was all in the makings back then. It's just it was very far and few, and it was very expensive to even work with it. But anyway, uh, the old arithmetic paper, when you were in school, it was what, maybe a 5 by 8 piece, you know, that kind of a creamish color paper. Uh, they pass it off for arithmetic, and you know, everybody take a couple extra sheets and take it home. And, well, 
I'm sitting there one afternoon on a Saturday, and I came up with a with a uh, lube, and I wrote it all out, you know, all the uh, details and uh, everything that had to be involved in the mixing and the time and the setup and and uh, you know one part this, ten part that, half part this, and I submitted it to them. And they thought it was a great idea. They'd even tested it. However, by the time they were done with it, they back then now, we're talking 71 maybe? Yeah, I think, because I was with Marla Winchester, 69, uh, mid-69, I left there uh, mid to late 70s. So yeah, 70, 71. Um, you know, things are a lot more expensive. So, anyway, after they've researched it and they mark not marketed it, but they've tested it and, and things like that around the shop and, you know, handed out some samplers and things, um, they realized that it was going to cost them way too much uh, with, the, with the products that were involved because of them being new and not really out there yet, not even heard of, basically. Um, it was going to cost too much. So, uh, at that point, they, I'm sorry, I had to walk away from the camera for a minute. At that point, they kind of said, well, you know, good idea, we're sorry um, if we stick with it, and uh, maybe in the future we can use it or, you know, forget about it. And, well, not a big deal. So I just folded up that piece of uh, paper, and I uh, put it in my pocket, and I took it home, and I put it in the files. And that's where it's set. And I actually forgot all about it. Because then I had gotten married and I started getting more and more involved in firearms and training with the um, police departments because I started it originally with uh, with our police department. Um, I had kind of an in so uh, at the range and then after a year or so of being there at the range um, as basically a uh, gopher, you know, and clean the range and take care of it and things like that. Uh, it was for a couple of police departments. They uh, tested me and made me uh, an instructor, uh, as well as a range safety officer for the police department. So uh, that worked out well. But like I say, uh, I really got you know tied up in other things. And then I met up with this old timer one day at the range. He came in and he's uh, got this. Um, stuff in a small eyedropper bottle that he's using to lube his guns and me being young and nosy I said what are you doing? Yeah, I'm oiling my guns. What are you using there? And he tells me that he was using um, an STP type of mix with uh, a um, non-detergent oil and he said it was um, like one part STP or Slick 50, whatever it was back then. I forgot to be honest with you. I used it for the longest time, but I, but I forgot what it was I was mixing. Um, and, uh, well, actually, it started out with STP. Then it went into the Slick 50 stuff. But, um, and three parts of uh, dirty weight non-detergent oil, motor oil. And he said you can always add a little extra oil, make it... Uh, four part oil, one part STP uh, and, and stuff like that. He says he's been doing it for a long time since STP hit the market and you know and all this bullshit. So I, I kind of listened to him and I started using it for the longest time. I think I've even done a video on it. Or not a video on it, but when I was doing one of my videos I was using it and I explained it. Well after buying this house and moving in and finally decided to start cleaning the garage up last year and going through a lot of boxes that I haven't gone through in years. And I'm talking years. Because uh, you got to remember, you know, uh, our last house that we had, we built it in 92. We sold it in 99 and moved on the boat. And we were on the boat for a number of years. So a lot of things have been in storage and in boxes. And, and like I said earlier, um, the wife and I, I think this is the fourth house or fifth house that we've bought since we've been together. Because, you know, I buy and if there's a market for it, I sell it. If I get tired of it, we sell it. You know, I buy something different. Um, but at that point, started going through the boxes. And lo and behold, 
I see that little piece of uh, that little piece of math paper, that, are, that arithmetic paper, <laughs> that was all folded up and yellowed around the edges and kind of crinkled and ripped on the seams. And I opened it up, you know, carefully to figure out what the hell is this that I kept for this long. And there it was, the formula. So I started to research the products to see if they were still available, you know, the chemicals needed, uh, and what they were as far as prices today. And because the prices today, uh, because it's known, you know, your synthetics, your Teflons, and your silicones and stuff like that are well known now, it's like anything else, um, you know, the prices drop. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, uh, cell phones, you know, at first, uh, you know, they were thousand dollars now you can get them for a hundred dollars yeah so when I found that out I decided to buy a, a few gallons of some of uh, the product that I needed and uh, I put it back out and uh, this is what I came up with and I'm telling you now I sent it out to a few of the guys just to have a couple of my subs you know they stuck with me through my crappy videos and instead of doing uh, these raffles and you know and all these things here uh, I just took the hundred uh, subs that I had and threw their names in a hat and stuffed them up and pulled out four or five of them and, and I've shipped them all, uh, the four or five of them that I pulled out of the hat, uh, a couple of these each, which is, um, I call it slide slick. Now it works on anything on the gun, you know, and uh, it works out well. Uh, and like I say, because of the prices nowadays are cheap enough, I've actually given it to some of the uh, samplers to the stores around here, uh, and they uh, started ordering it now, and uh, actually paying for it, instead of me leaving it there on consignment. Uh, so it's starting to work, you know? So I sent some of it out to some of the guys, like I said, to try, just to see what they think of it and such because you know what different seasons and different um, climates and, and different usages you know everybody uses their guns differently you know so uh, what, what may work good for one may not work for the other um, you know in my day up until a few years ago when I was having the surgery and the heart attacks you know I was at the range uh, five days a week I'd very easily uh, go through 5,000 rounds of ammo in a week you know, because what am I doing? I'm there and I'm, I'm training. So, you know, well, you got to show, you know, you got to shoot along with your students. You know, you got to keep them active. You got to keep them happy. You got to keep them informed and inquisitive. You know, you, you got to keep their, uh, their attention span going. So, you know, you shoot along with them, which is also good for me because uh, it kept my skills up. I know a lot of instructors that don't do a lot of shooting. Um, when they're teaching, and I mean, and their skills are actually uh, diminished a little, um, you know. And as a rule, if I'm doing a class of, um, you know, first timers, newbies to get their basic permit and basic safety, I don't do a lot of shooting. Then, to be honest with you, because I don't want that to become a competition. I don't want anything to become of it other than I want them to concentrate on safety. You know, and what they're doing, not so much as to what I'm doing. So, uh, I don't do that much shooting um, when I'm doing the basic stuff. Alright guys, we're getting there. I'm going to shut this down because I've wasted some time. And, and uh, we'll take it from there. It's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs>